بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد brothers sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله welcome back to another lesson on the life of Abu Bakr Sadiq رضي الله عنه in the previous one we spoke about Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه embracing Islam and his zeal for da'wah his zeal for saving people from the fire of Jahannam and entering them into Jannah so saving them from eternal doom. Today we are going to start off by speaking about Abu Bakr anhu helping and saving the oppressed people. Now, where did Abu Bakr anhu learn this from? In reality, Abu Bakr had a natural, nice nature. He was soft-hearted, but it was refined. Who was it refined by? It was refined by the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when we look into the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the first revelation descended upon the Prophet ﷺ. He was in the cave and he rushed towards his wife Khadija radiallahu anha and he said, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me, cover me. And she asked him what happened. So he told her and then he said, Khashitu ala nafsi, I fear for my life. So what did she say? She hadn't prepared a talk on his life. It was impromptu, it was so beautiful. This was his seerah impromptu. So she said, Kalla wallahi la yukhzik Allah abda, inna ka la tasilu rahim, wa tahmilu kalla wa taksibu al-ma'adum, to the end. So she said, by Allah, Allah will never forsake a man like you. Because why? Because you are the person who reconciles time. You are the one who carries the burden of people who nobody else wants to carry. The yatims, the widows, etc, etc. He said, you are the one who cares for the ma'doom. Ma'doom are those people who are nobodies in society. Nobody's interested in them. And this was the nature of the Prophet ﷺ before the buwa. And this is where Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, although he had a very beautiful nature before Islam, but it was refined by the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, I mean, there's a, a, a narration, very interesting, where some of the slaves are walking past Abu Sufyan. Now, Abu Sufyan was the leader of the Mushrikeen. So they said, they said, you know, we can't wait for the sword of Allah to strike the neck of this Mushrik. Because they, these people have been oppressed by the Mushrikeen and he was a leader of the Mushrikeen. So Abu Bakr was from the Quraysh, he was a firm of the Quraysh, these were slaves. So Abu Bakr, although he was a believer at the time, he got a bit upset. He said, how dare you say that about the leader of Quraysh? Now, these slaves were upset because they expected Abu Bakr to defend them because they were going through persecution. So the Messenger of Allah heard about this. And the Messenger of Allah summoned Abu Bakr. And he said to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, maybe you upset those people. Maybe you upset those slaves. And if you have upset them, then you have upset Allah. He said, if they're upset, then Allah is upset. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, being Abu Bakr, ran behind them and he asked them for forgiveness. You see, here the Prophet sallam, is refining the character. Yes, you're soft-hearted, but no, these are believers. These are oppressed believers. Yes, Abu Sufyan may be from the Quraysh. Yes, he may be the leader of the Quraysh. He may be your friend. But remember, these are people who are people of Iman. On another occasion, Abu Bakr anhu was cursing some of the slaves. So he's cursing them and the Messenger of Allah walks past. And he sees Abu Bakr cursing them and the Messenger of Allah says, Abu Bakr, make your choice. Either you're a Siddiq or you're La'an. Either you're a Siddiq or you're La'an, you're a cursor. You cannot be the two. So Abu Bakr, being Abu Bakr, the Messenger of Allah says this and he walks away. And Abu Bakr says, O Messenger of Allah, bear witness I, that I have freed all these slaves. I have freed them all. Look at this. See, subhanAllah, you make a mistake. And they, well, like, this is the life of Abu Bakr. You will see this when we go through it. Any time he made a mistake, any time somebody pointed it out to him, yeah, Abu Bakr straight away accepted that he made that mistake. This was unique in Abu Bakr anhu. And this is why, you know, it is only Allah who is perfect and the Anbiya who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves from any faults and any shortcomings. As the rest, 
they have their shortcomings, but this is the unique the characteristics of people like Abu Bakr radiallahu Soon as they realize that they change, they accept their fault. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, O Messenger of Allah, you bear witness that I have freed all these slaves. And this is where the Messenger of Allah refined the character of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and wherever Abu Bakr was known, and wherever he could save a slave, wherever he could buy a believer, he would buy a believer. And it was well known. For instance, Bilal, the Messenger of Allah, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, once went past, and Bilal is being persecuted. So he goes to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and he says to the Sahaba, he said, Who will free Bilal? Abu Bakr Kana Sabak was always the first person to do good things. Abu Bakr said, Me, O Messenger of Allah. So he gets up and he goes to Umayyah bin Khalf and he says to Umayyah, he said, Free, buy me, sell me Bilal. So he said, Yeah, I'll sell him to you. You're the one who corrupted him in the first place. You buy him. So he said, How much? He said, Ten. You know, give me ten coins, you can have him. Abu Bakr radiallahu goes home. He brings 10 coins and he gives it to Umayyah. And Umayyah pushes Bilal to take Bilal. And then Umayyah begins to laugh. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Umayyah, what are you laughing for? He said, Abu Bakr, I swear by Allah, if you had haggled with me and offered me one coin for Bilal, I would have sold it for one coin. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Oh Umayyah, I swear by Allah, if you had haggled with me and asked me for a hundred gold coins for Bilal, I would have given you a hundred gold coins. I would have given you a hundred gold coins for Bilal because that is what he's worth. Slave, but in the eyes of Abu Bakr anhu, he was worthy. You know how worthy he was? Imagine. Abu Bakr is the greatest man to walk on this earth after the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam. Yeah? And Abu Bakr says regarding Bilal, Bilal Sayyidi, Bilal is my master. He bore Bilal, he freed Bilal, and then he's saying Bilal is my master. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu would say, Abu Bakr Sayyiduna wa a'taqa Sayyiduna. Abu Umar, the second greatest man to walk on the face of this earth after the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam, says Abu Bakr is our master, and he freed our master. They're calling Bilal, African descent, slave. That Abu Bakr and Umar are saying he is our master. You see how the message of Allah changes society. This never happened even in a society today. You show me one society. I'm not talking about slaves. I'm talking about those who are the lowest caste in society in any third world country, that they turn around, that the leaders say that this is our master. Nobody, no matter how low his caste is, is not the level of a slave. The slave is the lowest that you can get. And then Abu Bakr buys him, frees him, and he says, Bilal is my master. La ilaha illallah. Umar says, Bilal is my master. Radiallahu anhum. You know, imagine this. He frees Bilal, and then Bilal becomes the Mu'addin of the Messenger of Allah. And he gives the Adhan, and every time he gives the Adhan, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes for Salah. And the Messenger of Allah leads the Salah. Bilal does the Iqama. The Sunnah of Bilal is revived over a million times in the world today. Yeah, all over the world, Adhan is given. Wherever you may be, you can go to Australia to Canada, from China, you know, to the tip of South America, the Sunnah of Bilal is revived. The only way Bilal could have given the Adhan is because Abu Bakr freed him. If he hadn't bought him and freed him, Bilal could never give the Adhan. Therefore, Abu Bakr gets the reward for every Adhan Bilal gave and every sunnah of the adhan of Bilal which is revived in the world today. Now that's what you call investing in your akhirah. 
That's what you call doing an action which outlives your existence. That's what you call leaving a legacy. Bilal himself and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And this is what made Bilal special. You know, what made Bilal special and what made Abu Bakr special is characteristics. They made the sacrifice for this deen when nobody else was ready to make it. That's what made them special. Abu Bakr was ready to go out with the deen when nobody was ready. Bilal was ready to proclaim Islam. He could have easily said, the Messenger of Allah said that a day will come that Islam will reach all corners of the world. Let me wait for that day. Let me wait for the Muslim to be ghalib and to be the dominant force. Then I'll come out. No, but the reward is when you do make the sacrifice when things are difficult. Anybody can make the sacrifice when things are easy. In the UK today, mashallah, masajid upon masajid, madaris upon madaris, it's quite easy now. You ask the elders when there was no masjid who made the uh, sacrifice. You go to Spain today, and go to the south of Spain, Andalus, you look at the level of dawah today, and you look at people who are making the effort today, and you said, subhanAllah, you said, that's a struggle. That's the struggle. And there was no bigger struggle than the time of Abu Bakr and Bilal radiallahu anhum. And this is why they are the sabiqoon al-awwaloon. They are the four foregoers. And that's why their reward is different by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, later on, I will discuss it, this in more detail, inshallah. Another person that he uh, freed was Ahmed bin Fuhira. And Ahmed bin Fuhira was also of Abyssinian descent. He was punished by his master. Abu Bakr bought him, freed him. And then he became one of the Qura, one of the most learned out of the Sahaba. So what happened is on the fourth year, a group of people came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they said, the Messenger of Allah, send us a group of people who can teach us deen in Najd. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent 70 Sahaba عنهم, who were known as the Qura. They were people who you know, knew about their deen. So this happened in the fourth year of Hijrah. When they reached a place called Bir Ma'una, they were ambushed and killed. Amongst those who was killed was Ahmed bin Fuhira. Lubaina, who was Lubaina? Lubaina was a slave girl of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Umar would beat her until Umar would get tired. Now you can imagine, Umar was Umar. They say, they say, if Umar stood in a gathering of people, you would know that that was Umar because he was taller than everybody else. Shifa bin to Abdullah says that when Umar would strike, you would know, you would feel that strike. So Umar would beat her, the narration mentioned, until Umar would get tired. And he would say, wait, let me get my breath back and then I will beat you again. And she would say, one day Allah will guide you. La ilaha illallah. What kind of guidance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. You know, such an enemy of Islam was Umar that they would say it's more likely that the donkey of Abu Quhafa, the, sorry, the donkey of uh, Al-Khattab, who was his father, the donkey of his father will embrace Islam, but Umar won't embrace Islam. And then Umar embraced Islam. Zanira. Zunaira, Zanira, but it's pronounced both ways. Zanira was a slave girl of Abu Jahl, and he would persecute her and he would beat her. Until they beat her so badly that she became blind. And then the mushrikeen began to say, See, Lat and Uzza took away your eyesight. So she made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, Oh Allah, Return my eyesight because they are taunting me that Lat and Uzza have taken my, my eyesight. That night she made the dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restored her eyesight. The verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَوْ كَانَ خَيْرًا مَا سَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ Those who disbelieve say to the believers, if there was any good in this religion, they would not have beaten us to it. They said, if there was any good in this religion, all these people who are the 
slaves and the untouchables of society would never have beaten us to it. But because the religion is no good, this is why we, the leaders, we are not inclined towards it. And this is, look at subhanAllah, how? I mentioned to you how Qawmiyyah and nationalism and racism blocked people from entering the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the earlier lessons. You see here, status. How status... Because they were the leaders of Quraysh. He said, how can we sit with Bilal? How can we sit with Khabbab? How can we sit with Sumayya and Ammar and Yasir? We are the leaders and these people are nobodies in society. This is what they said. كَفْرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَوْ كَانَ خَيْرًا مَا سَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ If there was any good in this religion, we the Chaudhrys, we the Sardars, we the Ru'asa, we the leaders would have embraced this Islam. First. And this is this is unique. I tell you why. Because the Prophet ﷺ gave these people hope. Nothing else in society gave these people hope, but this deen gave them hope. And this is why they rushed towards it. Another person, Zanira was actually also, she was also of European descent. So she was European descent. And then you had bin Fuqayya. Bin Fuqayya was the slave of Sufwan ibn Umayyah. Sufwan ibn Umayyah was one of the leaders of Quraysh, but he was also the brother-in-law of Khalid ibn Walid. And the narrations mention that they would make this uh, 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 Ibn Fuqayya lie on hot pebbles. Bilal was also made to lie on hot pebbles. The Amr ibn As says, I saw Bilal lying on these hot pebbles. He said, by Allah, and for those who have been to Saudi in the summer, you will know, you cannot walk outside barefooted. It's impossible. He says, by Allah, I saw them making Bilal lie on, on hot pebbles that if I placed a piece of meat on there, that it would have cooked the meat. And same with Abu Fuqiyya. Abu Fuqiyya, the same thing that was done. He was made to lie on, on these hot pebbles. And then the narration mentioned that one day there was this little uh, spider walking past. So Safwan ibn Umayyah said, that's your Lord, isn't it? That's your Allah that you worship. And he said, no, my Allah is the one that created me, created you and created the spider. So... Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu also bought Abu Fuqiyah. Then other people Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu bought was a woman called Umme Onais. Another woman is Nahdiya and her daughter. Nahdiya and her daughter, a lady owned them and she would beat them relentlessly. And she would say to them, until you leave this religion, I will carry on beating you. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu bought them. So subhanAllah, now, now what, sh what this shows is the compassionate nature of Bakr radiallahu anhu. See why? Because see, often people who are nobodies in society, nobody cares about. It's easy to help people of status in a society because you know you are going to get something back. But when there is a person in society who has no status at all, not many people will run, run to help them. And this was unique about Abu Bakr. Not only would he run to help them, he would spend from his own wealth. He would give them from his own wealth and he would buy them. One day, his father came to him, Abu Quhafa came to him and he said, Oh my son, look, you are very interested in freeing slaves. So no problem, if you want free slaves, free slaves. But do this. Free slaves who are strong, who can protect you when you need it. Because the mushrikeen are always looking to beat you and attack you. Free slaves who are strong. Now, what the Arabs had is that they had this called al-wila'ul uh, itaqa. Uh, wila'ul itaqa meant that if you freed a person, that person would always have a link with you. He would be indebted to you to the degree that when he died, when he died, you would inherit from him. That's how what your link was with that person. So he said, if you want to free, free people who are strong, free people who can protect you. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr was Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said, oh, my father, I don't do it for that reason. I do it for to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, سَيَجَنَّبُهُ الْأَتْقَى الَّذِي يُؤْتِ مَا لَوْ يَتَذَكَّى وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُدْزَهُ He said, Allah says, after Abu Bakr said this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recalls this in the Quran. He said, we will remove al-atqa, the most person with the greatest taqwa, God consciousness away from Jahannam. الَّذِي يُؤْتِ مَا لَوْ يَتَذَكَّى the only reason he gives his wealth is to be purified. And there is nobody that he gives his wealth so that he can get a recompense from. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa sawfa yarda. And then Allah, look, look at this. This is such an amazing verse. I'll tell you why. Firstly, Allah says, we will remove him from the fire of Jahannam. Allah gives the guarantee. Then Allah called him Al-Atqa. Al-Atqa is the superlative. Means the ismat of the. And it has an alif lam upon it, which makes it definite. So Allah is saying that he is the one with the greatest taqwa. Then Allah says, Alladhi yu'ti malu yatadakka. The one who gives the wealth only. Allah gives the guarantee for the ikhlas of Abu Bakr. Not just in one verse. That Allah is giving guarantee the only reason this man gives his wealth is not to free slaves so he can have strong slaves with him. No, to become purified. And then Allah goes further and he goes again. He said there is nobody that he wants a recompense from. Then Allah goes again to make sure that you understand it, that believers understand who we're talking about. Bakr. And Allah says that the only reason he does it is to search the pleasure of his Lord. And then Allah, la ilaha illallah, then right in the end, Allah said, wala sawfa yarda. We, or his creator, Allah, will make sure that he is happy and content with the recompense we give him. Could it be a greater virtue than this? You know, Allah gives the guarantee for your taqwa. Allah gives the guarantee that he will remove you from Jahan. Allah in three verses mentions your ikhlas. Your ikhlas. And this is why when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Bakr, like Abu Bakr came and the, the command came that keep your garments above your ankles because it could be a sign of the kabbur, it could be a sign of arrogance. He came to the Messenger of Allah, he said, I'm so thin of a Messenger of Allah, my trousers don't remain around my waist. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no problem Abu Bakr, you know, the kabbur doesn't come near you. Yeah? You, are, you, are, you don't fall into that category. And here Allah gives, you know, the most difficult thing is ikhlas. Nobody knows if they have ikhlas in reality. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Allah gives a guarantee for his ikhlas. So you see, Abu Bakr was made out of two components. Last week we spoke about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu concern about freeing the, uh, giving dawah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saving people from the fire of Jahannam. In this one, we see Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu saving people from punishment. Saving his mu'mineen. Not being able to bear seeing a person who is a believer who recites La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah being punished. And a great lesson for us. Why? Because today we live in a global village. We see the suffering of Muslims day in, day out. And the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu should inspire us that we have a concern, at least an iota of the concern that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the status of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to follow his precepts. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Zakumullah khayran for watching. And please do not forget to watch the next episode. And inshallah, with your du'as, there will be plenty more history series coming very soon. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.